Welcome back to Mopus Photo 101, your resource for all things photography. Make sure to hit subscribe to get all the latest content, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Today, we're taking a look at capturing motion in photography. So how did we go from clunky old still cameras and long exposures to 4K video on our smartphones? As the story goes, it all started with a bet. For years, artists argued about the position of a horse's legs in full gallop. Since it's a phenomenon that happens faster than our brains can perceive, the question remained, do all legs leave the ground, or just two? A British-born photographer and inventor, Edward Muybridge, took up the task. Setting up his experiment along a simple horse racetrack, he outfitted a sequence of 24 cameras, their shutters tied to tripwires spaced evenly down the path. As the animal and its jockey raced along, it would trigger each camera and take a photograph spaced fractions of a second apart. The result? A series of 24 images showing a horse's gallop as never seen before. While it helped settle a long-standing debate, it also happened to lead to something more familiar to many of us, the moving image. Moybridge's shots, stacked and played back, recreate the illusion of continuous motion. Half a world away from Moybridge's racetrack, two French brothers pursued their passion for photography at the intersection of art, science, and invention. Having pioneered a number of advances from early color photography to new methods of mass production, they soon set their sights on a magical process sweeping the world, the moving image. While Moybridge may have needed a whopping 24 cameras to recreate his sequences, the Lumiere brothers instead aimed to do what they did best, innovate. Taking advantage of a new flexible material called cellulose, they coated long strips of it with photochemistry and wound it tightly in a roll. Using a modified box camera common at the time, this new roll of film was fed through it to snap a long series of stills. Once exposed and developed, the film could be reloaded back into the same device and played back. And just like that, the all-in-one movie camera and projector was invented. While Moybridge and the Lumiere brothers were all about the moving image, others turned to capturing finer detail at ever faster speeds. Some of the most important advances in technology during the 20th century often had a less than savory origin. In the early 1940s in the United States, a young engineer, Eugene Harold Edgerton, was tasked with quite a job to film the test of America's first large-scale warhead. While we're familiar with what those tests led to a few years later in the midst of a world war, another development came from his work, high-speed photography. Borrowing from his earlier defense work, he developed a special flash bulb that allowed shutter speeds to be pushed beyond anything photographers could have imagined. While Moybridge and Lumiere brothers captured details unfolding at a fraction of a second, Edgerton soon entered the realm of speeding bullets and the detail of a bursting balloon freezing the scene in stunning detail. Far from Edgerton's engineering lab, artists began to enjoy new developments in photography. No longer confined to long exposures and stiff subjects, photographers were able to capture more nuance, from bustling streets of major cities to subtle changes in a person's expression. One artist in particular, Philip Halsman, used these advances in faster shutter speeds and bright studio lighting to take the portrait to a whole new level his series of junk photographs. Rubbing elbows with some of the most influential figures in politics and culture, Halsman decided to take the photographic portrait in a wacky direction by asking his subjects to jump for the camera. By doing so, the typical pose one strikes for a photo becomes totally impossible, instead showing us a new dimension of their personality. Perhaps the most famous is this guy, the artist Salvador Dali. Disclaimer, no cats were harmed in the making of this image, but Halsman did have to get the timing just right. The throwing of the water, tossing of the cats, and the artist jumping with a grin from ear to ear all had to happen at just the right moment for the camera. The result? An image as quirky and weird as the subject, celebrating their character more than any traditional portrait could ever do. How do you like to capture motion in your photographs? Share with us in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can check out all our resources on photography and more at mopa.org.